The daily problems of most teachers are not restricted to ones they face at school. Our Miss Brooks, who teaches English at Madison High School, is no exception to this rule. Many of my problems don't begin until I leave school, or before I start to school. This in spite of the fact that my home life consists of A, my landlady, Mrs. Davis, and B, our cat Minerva. Unfortunately, A is extremely absent-minded and B is allergic to cat hair. Last Friday morning, the three of us were having breakfast together. Careful, dear. Don't drink so fast or you'll get milk all over you. Thanks for reminding me, Mrs. Davis. Could you hand me that napkin, please? Here you go, Connie. You'll look silly with your whiskers all white. Well, who wouldn't? Oh, you were talking to Minerva. All finished, Minerva. Meow. There's a good girl. Now go on into the kitchen and wait for me. Meow. And while you're in there, do the dishes. <sniffs> all right, fine. I'll do the dishes. Oh, don't bother, Connie. You need to get ready for school. Walter Denton should be picking you up any minute. Of course, if you want, you could dust the living room for me if you've got a minute. The hand irons I bought yesterday are pretty dusty. Hand irons? But we haven't even got a fireplace. That's what I told the salesman, Connie. But he carried them all the way up to our door. Carried them from where? From his car. He said it was his first time in our neighborhood. A door-to-door -door hand iron salesman. Well, that's a new wrinkle. Yes, he was, Connie. And pretty gray, too. That's why I just had to buy them. You'll find the set by the piano. There's a brush and a sifter that came, too. Well, what are we waiting for? Let's burn the piano. I'm sorry, Mrs. Davis. What you buy is your own business. But I don't like seeing people take advantage of you all the time. Oh, Connie, no one takes advantage of me. Certainly they do. You're always doing favors for somebody. And most of the time, they're practically strangers. Like that night you consented to sit for that couple down the street? You sat all right, until five in the morning. But they couldn't find anyone else to stay with their children. And a fine litter it was, too. Two sets of twins, eight months old and two years old. Oh, it wasn't so bad. They had a lovely phonograph, and I listened to music all evening long. It had a record changer and everything. You probably set a few changing records that night yourself. Mrs. Davis, you just have to learn how to say no to people. I guess I'm just an evening, Mark. Well, I'll get on with these dishes. That must be Walter now. I'm coming! Miss Brooks, isn't it? I'm a neighbor of yours, Mrs. Evans. George and I live about a mile from here. Are you asking me or telling me? Well, come in, neighbor. Oh, thank you. Into the living room here. Sit, please. Mrs. Um, Evans. Oh, you still don't know who I am, do you? Let's see. Uh, Belmont Laundry, does that do anything to you? They do tear my slip every once in a while. I knew that would do it. It's good to chat with you again, Miss Brooks. Again? When did you chat with me last, Mrs. Evans? Right after the holiday. The Easter holiday? Oh, no, dear. Last Thanksgiving. We were both at the Belmont Laundry to complain about the service. On the way out, we had a conversation. I said, isn't this laundry getting terrible? And you agreed with me. Now do you remember? Of course, I just forgot some of the details. Well, I know you'll forgive me if I'm beat, Miss Brooks. I've been rather upset lately. It's George. It is? Yes, it's my husband. He isn't a bit well. That's why we have to make this trip. His doctor thinks a week in the country will do him a world of good. So we're going upstate this afternoon. Molly has a farm up there, you know. <laughs> it's a beautiful place. Oh, yes. If there's one thing Molly knows, it's how to pick a farm. Oh, she didn't pick it. Uncle Fred left it to Molly. George is so attached to peanuts. And just this one week, will, will you take care of peanuts for us? That depends. How many bags are there? 
You misunderstand. Peanuts is our dog. He's the cutest little thing you ever saw. He's very sweet and no trouble at all. He's right out in our station wagon. Come on out and meet him. Oh, but Mrs. Evans, a dog We'd I... We take him with us, but Molly is afraid of dogs. Come along, Miss Brooks. I took the liberty of parking in your driveway. I hope you don't mind. I see that. Who is that at the wheel? Your husband? No, that's Peanuts. Oh. <laughs> Did he drive you down? I mean, what kind of dog is he? He's a Dane, of course. Of course, I should have known. He's built just like Lawrence Melchior. Here, Peanuts, come here, boy. How can he get out? The windows are closed. Oh, he opens the door with his teeth. We taught him how when he was a little puppy, and he hasn't forgotten it since. He's got a wonderful memory. He should have. By the look of him, his father was an elephant. <laughs> Miss Brooks, where'd you... Miss Brooks, where are you going? I just remembered. I left a crossword puzzle up this tree. Oh, don't be afraid. He likes you. See, he wants to make friends. Woof, woof, woof. Does he talk like that to all his friends? Come on. Come on, Peanut. There's a good pup. Now give Miss Brooks your paw. No, thanks. I've got a couple. Look, Mrs. Evans, I don't think that... Nonsense. Let's go into the house now so I can give you a few last-minute instructions. Come along, Peanuts. You might as well get used to your new home. You'll be here for a week after all. Oh, but Mrs. Evans, I can't accept the responsibility for a dog this size. Besides, this isn't my house. I just rent a room here. Mrs. Davis owns the place and she could have- Well, I've finished the dishes, Connie. Oh, I didn't know you had company. Who are these folks? These folks, Mrs. Davis, are Mrs. Evans and her dog, Peanuts. Oh, how do you do? Well, we meet again, Mrs. Davis. Again? We all take from the same laundry. I was just telling Miss Brooks about how little trouble Peanuts is around the house. He's really like a lap dog, but he doesn't require any special attention whatsoever. He'll eat some of whatever you eat. Get up when you get up and go to sleep when you go to sleep. I hope he has his own toothbrush. Look, Mrs. Evans, this cottage belongs to Mrs. Davis. It's up to her. Oh, don't think about me, Connie. If you want this lovely dog, then please take him. Good night, all. Thank you, Miss Brooks. And you won't be sorry. Peanuts is loads of fun. Well, I better run along now. But how do I contact you Oh, if... you won't have to get in touch with us. We'll come get him as soon as we're back from the farm. Goodbye, my dear. Now you've done it, Mrs. Davis. I've done it? Why, Connie, Mrs. Evans is your friend. My friend? I've talked to that woman once in my life. Well, it's done now, Connie. Might as well make the best of it. Say, where is the dog? Probably in the kitchen. The door is ajar. That's funny. I thought I closed it. He opened it with his teeth. They taught him when he was a puppy. Come on, keep up with the program. Oh, there was a whole leg of lamb on the stove, Connie. Was is right, Mrs. Davis. Peanuts! You didn't eat that whole leg, did you? Woof, woof. Woof, woo, woo, woo. Mrs. Davis, we can't afford to feed this dog. Not if we plan to eat, too. There's Walter Denton, Connie. Shall I let him in? No, I'll let Walter in. Walter! Say, he doesn't have a dog of his own, does he? Not that I know of. A kid like that? I bet he'd love the idea of taking care of a dog for a week. His folks have a big backyard, too. It'll be just the thing. Coming, Walter. Now, whatever you do, Mrs. Davis, keep Peanuts out of sight until I've prepared him. Well, Walter Denton. Come in, Walter. Come in. Thanks, Miss Brooks. I would have been here sooner, but I was dog-tired this morning. Oh, what a coincidence. I mean, hey, Walter. Who would you say is a fella's best friend? Next to his mother, of course. Um... Stretch Snodgrass. Great guy. A real pal. Why, Miss Brooks? I mean in the animal kingdom, Walter. Who's man's best friend? 
Well, out west, a uh, horse is. Right. And next to a horse? A uh, dog, I'd guess. Right again, Walter. Now, what would you do if you could get an animal combining the best features of both? I don't get it, Miss Brooks. You will, Walter. For one week, I'm offering you absolutely free of charge the opportunity to look after, play with, and be a pal to a wonderful creature named Peanuts. Peanuts? Oh, where is he? Right in the kitchen. A friend of mine left him here, but when I thought of how much bigger your backyard is, I knew I just had to make the sacrifice. Call him, Walter. If you insist, Miss Brooks. Peanut! Here, Peanut! Woof, woof, woof. Walter, come down off that piano. I can't. I'm afraid. Oh, why? I'm worried about his reaction to flies, Miss Brooks. Are, are you sure he won't bite? Oh, I'm sure. Now come here and pet him. Oh, all right. See? He likes you, Walter. Now give him your paw, boy. Go on, give him... Not you, Walter. Say he is all right. But I couldn't take him home if I wanted to, Miss Brooks. My parents started a garden out back. A garden? That's why I don't have my own dog right now. Ugh. I wish I knew what to do with him. Frankly, Walter, I just can't afford to feed him for a week. Hey, I've got an idea. How about we leave him at Snodgrass's pet shop? You know, Stretch's old man. He's got all sorts of animals down there, and I'm sure he wouldn't mind. Perfect, Walter. Then when Mrs. Evans comes back, she can pay for his food bill. Come on, Peanuts. Roof. Just one thing, Walter. I should drive. You sit in the back with Peanuts. I uh, sit in the back with Peanuts? But there's not enough room for both of us in the back. Nonsense. Peanuts is a lap dog. You can sit in his lap. Well, here's the pet shop, Miss Brooks. We can... Oh, golly, I forgot. What? It's closed. Oh, Stretch told me his pop was going away for the weekend. Oh, that's just dandy. Now I'll have to take Peanuts to school. To school? But, Miss Brooks, Mr. Conklin doesn't allow dogs at school. If he saw Peanuts, he'd blow his top. Our beloved principal will just have to make an exception, Walter. Besides, this dog is outside of Mr. Conklin's jurisdiction. What do you mean? He happens to be a Danish citizen. In spite of my forced bravado, I was pretty squeamish about getting Peanuts into the school without Mr. Conklin finding out. Fortunately, we were early. So while Walter parked the car, I was able to hustle the dog into the supply room with a minimum of incident. Of course, any of the students we did encounter in the halls will spend the remainder of their adolescence with hanging jaws and bulging eyes. But that was unavoidable. Stretch Snodgrass, Madison's star athlete, known to the faculty as the body beautiful and the head empty, was in charge of the supply room when Peanuts and I arrived. Oh, hi, Miss Brooks. <laughs> quiet, quiet. This is Peanuts Stretch. Oh, I didn't notice him. Nice pooch. Pooch? Well, you're not seeing him at his best. Usually he's got a barrel around his neck with a St. Bernard in it. Stretch, we've got to keep him out of sight. Mr. Conklin can't find out that he's in the school. Oh, he won't. Mr. Conklin's at a doctor's appointment. Harriet told me when she gave me the key to the supply room. Her father's getting tested for aller... Al... Uh, aller... Al... Allergies? Yeah. He won't be in for another hour or so. Harriet said she talked to him on the phone and he's half shot. Translation? Only through with half the shots the doctor is giving him. Yeah, but don't worry about peanuts, Miss Brooks. I'll keep him right here in the supply room. Oh, look, he's scratching his own back. He smiles when he does it. Don't you? I wonder what he's got back there. Oh, it's probably just a mild case of hives. Well, it's certainly clever the way he takes the hives in one part and beats them to death with the other. He'd make a great watchdog for this place if I had to leave or anything. 
Imagine what a gag it'd be if someone wandered in to pinch a pencil or something. Oh, yeah. Great gag. They'd probably get hysterical permanently. I've sent for you, Miss Brooks, because I believe that you, above all the other personnel at Madison High School, can keep a level head in a crisis. Why, thank you, Mr. Conklin, but... I'm trying to be calm myself, Miss Brooks, and I shall make every effort to acquaint you with the facts as clearly and concisely as possible. Yes, sir. First of all, I returned from the doctors an hour ago. Some allergy shots. I was jotting down some possible prizes for the community chest raffle when I found myself in need of another notebook. Yes, Mr. Conklin. Pending your opinion, I have failed to notify the police or fire department. It is my belief, if we can successfully avoid any and all panic, we can ourselves remove the students and faculty to a place of safety from this danger. What danger? Miss Brooks, there's a leopard in the supply closet. Oh, is that all? I mean, oh, that's impossible, Mr. Conklin. Impossible? But I tell you I saw it. Mr. Conklin, you said it yourself. You just had some shots. Isn't it possible that what you saw was a hallucination? Miss Brooks, I slammed the door on the creature as soon as I saw it, but not until I had a clear look at it. When I saw those slobbering jaws, what they could rend... Well, they already rended. Uh, had rend. What I mean is, I'm sure it's just the shots. Come with me, Miss Brooks. I'll prove the shots had nothing to do with it. I can't even comprehend it. What do you suppose that leopard is doing in our supply room? Maybe he ran out of chalk. Careful, Miss Brooks. That puny door could never hold him if he became enraged. Let's tiptoe up to it and listen to the beast. When I'm calling you, will you answer too? The beast hasn't got a bad voice. Oh, Stretch, it's Miss Brooks. I'm out here with Mr. Conklin. Open up. Okay, ma'am. Hi. Well, where is it? Where's what? The beast. There is a great big... It had a huge... With jaws, like... How long have you been in here, Snodgrass? Me? Uh, all day, Mr. Conklin. All morning, anyways. You see, Mr. Conklin, it was just these shots after all. Now why don't you go back to your office and lay down for a while? I just don't understand it. I saw it as clearly as I see you now. Clearer, in fact. Maybe I should go back to my office. I've still got to find a suitable prize for that raffle. Uh, maybe I ought to call my doctor. Yes, that's what I'll do. I'll call my doctor. A good idea. I should call my doctor. Yeah, that is a good idea. Call the doctor. Stretch. Quick stretch, get him out from under, and let's get him out of here, and let's go. Get who out? Peanuts. You hid him under the table when I said I was with Mr. Conklin, didn't you? Oh no, Miss Brooks. He blew. He blew? Yeah, I didn't want to admit it in front of old man Conk, uh, Mr. Conklin. I left the supply room for about ten minutes, and when I got back, uh, Peanuts had gone for a powder. He could use some powder. This terrible stretch. We've got to find him before Mr. Conklin sees him again. You go to the cafeteria and look for him. Cafeteria? But it isn't lunch period yet. For him, it's lunch period all day. Besides, some of our younger students are still pretty tender. I'll look in Mr. Boynton's biology lab. Maybe something in the lab attracted peanuts. I know there's something that attracts me in there. <laughs> now get going, Stretch. Right away, Miss Brooks. I'll report back here if I find anything. You do that. I'll just close up the- Oh, excuse me, Miss Brooks. I just ran into Daddy in the hall, and he seemed overwrought. Well, that's better than being underwrought. Your father's just a little nervous, Harriet. He just been to the doctor, you know. Yes, I know. That's why he sent me to come find you. He says you need to find a prize for the raffle tickets we sold last week. Me? Yes, the drawings this afternoon. You're on, Harriet. Right now, I have to see a real man about a real dog. Excuse me, Mr. Boynton. I hope I'm not interrupting anything. Not at all, Miss Brooks. I was just about to have a little snack. 
I brought some milk and pastries from home. It's Danish. Danish? Don't bite it until you see if it's wearing a collar. What? Skip it, Mr. Boynton. Do you mind if I look around the lab? Why, no, Miss Brooks. But what are you looking for? I'd rather skip that, too. If I tell you, you only give me an incredulous look and say, Why'd you do a crazy thing like that? Oh, no, I won't. Honest. Well, I lost a dog. It's a Great Dane. I brought it to school this morning. You brought a Great Dane to school? Why'd you go and do a crazy thing like that? I knew it. But it's too late for explanations. Right now, I've got to find him. Of course. And I'll do anything I can to help. But let's approach this problem in a scientific manner. Take the habits and custom of the creature and go from there. Fine, but do you know the habits of a Great Dane? Well, Miss Brooks, I'm a biologist. If I say so myself, I know the habits of animals A to Z, or should I say aardvark to zebra. <laughs> uh, it's a little joke we scientists like to tell. Tell it later on, will you? Right now, we have to find peanuts. Okay, okay, the Great Dane also known as the boar hound, has a keen sense of smell. He's been bred to be a great dog for hunting. I know. I've been hunting this one all morning. Uh, tell me, Miss Brooks, where was he the last time you saw him? In the supply room. Mm-hmm. Now, let's consider the Dane's remarkable sense of hearing. It's five times that of a human's. Could he have heard anything that have made him run away? Just the one about the aardvark and the zebra. Miss Brooks, I'm trying to help you. The Dane was originally developed to help hunt boars. It's why they're called boarhounds, you see. And they are a cross between Excuse the- Excuse me, Mr. Boynton. You've just given me an idea. You say he's used to hunting boars? That's correct. Then all I have to do is put myself in his place. Now, if I was hunting for a boar, where would I go? Well, I'm sure I don't know. I do. I'd go to the office of the biggest boar at Madison High- Mr. Conklin, here I come. Come in. Uh, hello, Mr. Conklin. May I come in? I suppose so, Miss Brooks. Today has been a very trying day. Yes, I know, Mr. Conklin. They haven't been able to isolate my particular allergy yet. The doctor says... Hello, Mr. Allergy speaking. This is Conklin. Hello, Mr. Conklin. This is Mrs. Davis. I wouldn't disturb you at school like this, but it's terribly important. I've got to speak to Miss Brooks. She's right here, Mrs. Davis. One moment. It's for you. Hello, Mrs. Davis. Hello, Connie. I've just got some distressing news. Mrs. Evans called and said that her husband's doctor called. His medical issue was an allergy to dog hair. Mrs. Evans? What? Naturally. They can't keep peanuts any longer, so Mrs. Evans called to tell me to tell you that he's yours now. Mine? But I can't... Where's Mrs. Evans? I have to call her back. That's impossible, Connie. They've just left town for the summer. Left town? We'll talk to you about this later, Mrs. Davis. Uh, thanks, if you'll forgive a lie for calling. Everything all right, Miss Brooks? Oh, yes. Everything is dandy, Mr. Conklin. Good, good. Now, about this prize for the community chest raffle. I've been racking my brain about it. Have you been able to think of anything? <laughs> what did you say, Miss Brooks? Me? I didn't say anything, Mr. Conklin. What did you say? I said I was... <laughs> I thought that's what you said. Mr. Conklin, I think I have the answer to both your problems. What do you mean? <laughs> First, your allergy, Mr. Conklin. Do you hang your coat in the closet over there? Yes, I do. And did you wear a tan pea coat to school today? Yes, I did. How tall is it? Tall. Has it got soft brown buttons? Yes, I believe they're brown. With long eyelashes? Miss Brooks, what are you getting at? Grip the arms of your chair tightly, Mr. Conklin. Here, Peanuts. Here, boy. Woof, 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 woof. Take it away. Take it away. <laughs> Peanuts, this is Mr. Conklin. Mr. Conklin, 
Shake paws with the first prize in today's community chest raffle. <laughs> Uh, let's see your ticket, Miss Brooks. Oh, don't be silly, Walter. I've never won a raffle in my life. Well, you won this one? Oh, no. Six, four, four. We got the winner right here, Mr. Conklin. Oh, no, 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 no. Well, congratulations, Miss Brooks. <laughs> got anything you'd like to say? Just one thing, Mr. Conklin. Woof, 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 woof. Yo, oh, isn't that the best luck for Miss Brooks? Another episode of Our Miss Brooks comes to a close, and just in time for a flea bath. Next week, Retrostatic Radio returns to the turmoils of the White family for another special two-parter, The Guiding Light, The Child Psychologist. Retrostatic Radio is made possible from the generous donations of listeners like you. So please, consider becoming a patron at patreon.com where there is currently a contest being held for any tier to be able to win our upcoming first round of merchandise, beginning with brand new posters. However, if you'd like to make a one-time donation, then please go to the Retrostatic Radio page on Kofi.com. And if you're a small business podcast or just otherwise want your brand on episodes of Retrostatic Radio, please email us at retrostaticradio at gmail.com to discuss our sponsorship opportunities. Sharing is caring, so please, if you enjoy this or any of our other broadcasts, sharing is caring, so please, if you enjoy this or any other of our broadcasts, subscribe where possible, share wherever you can, and please follow our social media pages on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram for the latest fun from our social media team, Dawn the Squishy Fawn and Priscilla the Yarn Dragon. This concludes our broadcast day. Good night, and God bless.